And today I asked uh, G7 countries to adopt legislation and put in place all necessary procedures needed to seize Russian sovereign assets and give them to Ukraine. Give them to Ukraine for Ukraine to use this money to rebuild our country, to reconstruct our country after all the damage inflicted on us. Canada has already done so. And uh, I have a feeling that others will reach that point rather sooner than later. The assumption is very simple. Russia must pay politically, economically, but also financially. The recipe is clear, more of the same. I mean more support to Ukraine, including military support. I will announce that we at the European Union, we will provide a new tranche of 500 more millions to support military Ukraine. If this package is, is adopted without oil embargo, uh, I believe President Putin can celebrate because it will be the first case when the unity of the European Union will be broken because of the position of one country, Hungary, uh, if, if, theoretically, Hungary opts out and uh, does not support the package, I believe it will cause a lot of damage on the European Union itself. And therefore, they have to do their utmost to prevent it from happening. And second, for what regards the entry of Ukraine in the European Union, Italy supports completely this process. We support completely the ambitions of Ukraine a guardare al suo futuro come un futuro all'interno dell'Unione Europea. La grande famiglia europea deve e può allargarsi e quando si allarga aumenta la presenza dei valori democratici in tutto il continente e l'Italia sosterrà pienamente in quella sede l'ingresso della Finlandia e della Svezia nella Nato. È un'ambizione che parte da una decisione sovrana dei singoli Stati e in accordo con i principi e i valori di un'alleanza difensiva noi come Italia siamo ben lieti di accogliere questi due Paesi in questa grande alleanza, un'alleanza che difende i Paesi di cui, che ne fanno parte e soprattutto è un'alleanza che ha garantito la pace per decenni e che continuerà a garantire la pace per decenni. Denn heute geht es darum, dass dieser furchtbare völkerrechtswidrige Angriffskrieg eben nicht nur eine tiefe Krise für ganz Europa bedeutet, sondern das ist mittlerweile eine globale Krise. Und genau das ist das Ziel des russischen Präsidenten, diese Krise, diesen völkerrechtswidrigen Angriffskrieg ebenso dafür zu nutzen, die Weltgemeinschaft zu spalten. Und genau dem stellen wir uns als G7-Außenministerinnen und Außenministern hier entgegen. Aber wir erleben in diesem Krieg, dass man sich auf nichts verlassen kann, weil man sich auf keine Äußerung des russischen Präsidenten verlassen kann. Und deswegen haben wir ganz bewusst eben auch Moldau hier auf diesem G7-Treffen mit als Gast vertreten. Deswegen habe ich ganz bewusst die Moldau-Plattform gestartet, indem wir die Republik weiter unterstützen. Und wir werden das auch in Zukunft weiter tun. Was ein important und unique day in the history of Moldova, of my country. It's the first time that Moldova has been invited to a G7 meeting like that. That's an honor, but at the same time, that's a recognition of the tragic moments through which uh, our region is going through uh, because of the war in Ukraine, because of the Russian aggression against Ukraine. Uh, Moldova is Ukraine's most fragile neighbor. It's the country that has been after Ukraine the most affected. We have a huge, we have a very, uh, a series of very negative effects for our country because of this war on the economic sphere, on the humanitarian sphere. Uh, we had a huge wave of refugees. We have 3.5% of our population are now refugees from Ukraine. We think that Europe's role, the role of the European Union is to respond and keep countries away from war. And that is why we applied for EU membership. We want to get into the European Union. We don't want shortcuts. We are making reforms. But we believe that that's the best answer to ensuring peace on the European continent 
is to have democratic, peaceful, uh, reformed states uh, join forces together, acting together to maintain peace on European continent. So there is no new dramatic initiative that comes out of today, but we make sure that everything we agreed in previous visits is on track. Where we need to accelerate, we accelerate. So it's about refugee relocation, it's about economic assistance, it's about strengthening our capacity for border management, uh, and uh, it's about our capacity to maintain socio-economic uh, calm. It's very important at this time that we keep up the pressure on Vladimir Putin by supplying more weapons to Ukraine, by increasing the sanctions. G7 unity has been vital during this crisis to protect freedom and democracy and we'll continue to work together to do just that.